So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, welcome everyone, inshallah. Happy Ramadan. Uh, now, I'm going to continue my recording and my uh, uh, juz, the ajza, the, uh, the tafsir, the short and sweet tafsir that I was doing. I had done 1 through 14 last Ramadan, and that will be available, inshallah, in the comments section. You can see the link. One brother has kind of like gathered them into a playlist, so I'm just going to give the link to his. Uh, from there, I think. Um, and it is recommended in Ramadan, of course, to make a relationship with Quran. This is understood. This is why I'm going to try to focus as much as I can on the Quran in this month, inshallah ta'ala. Okay? Uh, I'm not sure if I can continue with the speed, continue this with the speed that I did last Ramadan, but I will try my best, inshallah ta'ala. Okay? Uh, now we are on the 15th juz. Now this covers Sutul Bani Israel to, uh, I think, ayah number 84 of Sutul Kahf. Okay? Now, uh, before, when I uh, finish the 14th juz, there's one ayah that I uh, didn't go into as much detail as uh, I would have liked to. So I want to first go back to that one particular ayah of Sutul Nahal, which is the surah before Sutul Bani Israel, this surah. This surah has two names, Sutul Isra and Sutul Bani Israel. Okay? So before I talk about this surah, and this is a very, very important surah, it is the key to understanding Surah Al-Kahf. And I will explain why in just a few minutes. But first, if we can just take a look at this ayah, I think it's the third last ayah of Surah Al-Nahl before the Surah Al-Isra starts. بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ أُدُوا إِلَى سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ Over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives three Three, you can say, levels of da'wah that have to be done. You know, doing da'wah is a fard upon the ummah, upon the collective of the Prophet, of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That da'wah internally and externally has to be done at three levels. Udu ila sabili rabbika. So call to the sabil, to the path of your rabb, in three ways. Bil hikmah. Number one with hikmah, with wisdom. You know, in number two, ma'udhatil hasana. And in, you can say, in beautiful uh, in, in instructions or beautiful uh, stories or beautiful advice. Ma'udhatil hasana wajadilhum billati hi ahsan and argue with them in the best of ways. Okay? Now, the first phase, which is hikmah, actually when it refers to the mission of the Prophet wasallam four times in Qur'an, this hikmah is mentioned as the highest peak of that. minhum. It is Allah who raised a messenger amongst them, meaning amongst the ummiyin, the unlettered people, meaning the Arabs. Yatlu alayhim ayatihi, he recites to them the ayat of Allah. وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ and purifies them. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ and he teaches them the book, meaning the law. What is halal, what is haram. وَالْحِكْمَةِ and the wisdom. There are people in society, they don't accept something because it feels good or it feels right. They accept something because it has a strong argument. And the word hikmah, you know, you also, you know the word hukum, which means command. Or hukuma, which means government. Okay? So hikmah is something that it's very strong. It's undefeatable. This is why Quran itself, because it is a book of hikmah, it is undefeatable. It itself says, as we read in the first Jews, where it says to the Christians and the Jews, uh, bring your proof. If you're truthful, bring your proof. What is your proof? So, And the relationship here between the the intelligentsia and the the populace, the pop, the, the the citizens, is the same relationship as the brain and the body. Okay, the brain is decisive, meaning there's a few people that are decisive in society. If you look at the mission of the Prophet sallam, it has been made very uh, common that the first people to respond to the message of the Prophet sallam, were the outcasts of society, were the downtrodden of society, were the poor of society. But there's another thing. The first, very first people to respond to the call of the Prophet ﷺ and the core, in a sense, were the people of 
of the intelligentsia, the people who you have to give rational arguments to, to convince them that this is the truth. Okay, so these are people that are not just, uh, you know, they don't have a blank slate. If somebody has a blank slate in their mind, you write something good, their fitra is clean, they will accept it. But some people, their fitra has, a, you know, before t something touches their fitra, it has a filter called the brain. And the brain says this is right or wrong, if the argument is strong or not strong. And these are the people that are able to say, okay, the, when they're able to, they look for arguments, they're able to tell between what is, uh, what has a primary uh, importance, what has a secondary importance, like this. So they have the same relationship, the the people of intelligentsia and as the as the brain and the body, in a, in a sense. But <clears throat> hikmah is specifically strong arguments with those people that have good fitrah, that have a good internal fitrah. If you're an evil genius, you can be very smart, but the, even the best arguments are not going to affect you because your fitrah is destroyed because the Quran gives arguments based upon how man was meant to be and created and according to the human fitrah. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as we will read, وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا لُكْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ We gave Lukman hikmah an ishkur lillah. Shukr is a process of human fitrah, of human the, the self-disposition. You do something good to someone, they feel that they owe you because you did good to them. This is the, 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 the healthiness of the fitra. So hikmah is a strong argument, but keeping in mind that fitra aspect, okay? So udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah wal mu'idhat al hasana and, the, and what? Beautiful uh, instruction, beautiful warnings, right? With stories, with ideas, with concepts, with examples, with history, with the uh, the examples of the Salaf as Salih, the predecessors of Islam, the the original Salaf, the actual Salaf, right? And so, wal al Hasana, the examples of the prophets, like the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu so on and so forth. And if it comes from a sincere heart, it will enter another sincere heart. Okay, but there will always be uh, groups that are um that are that are that are that are out there that are working against islam okay and they have to be put into their place and so the art of arguing needs to be understood it's an art in itself right it has nothing to do with truth or falsehood somebody can come with a falsehood and make it a very beautiful argument and so allah says wajadilhum meaning the people of the book and argue with them okay but in which way in the most beautiful way. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows who is astray from his path. And he is the only one who knows most about who is guided. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those people that are guided. Okay. Now, so I just wanted to complete this uh, ayah as part of the, uh, as we move forward now with the uh, 15th juz. So, this surah, Surah Al-Isra and Surah Al-Kahf are twin surahs. We will see some examples of why they are twin surahs. And I have discussed this last year also, that surahs come in many of the surahs, or most of the surahs, they come in pairs. Okay? And so, Surah Al-Isra starts with Subhan, Subhan al with Subhanallah. And Surah Al-Kahf, the next surah starts with Alhamdulillah. Over there, it talks about the book of Allah coming down. Over here, it talks about the abd of Allah, the servant of Allah, going up. Another example I will give, and then we can get into more details as we continue with the uh, with the surah. Both of the surahs end with two qul. Okay, so qul and qul, the last two verses of uh, Isra end with a qul, and the last two verses of uh, of Sutul Kahf also end with a qul. Okay. And so, uh, and they are very meaningful. Those uh, those four quls, you can say, are very meaningful to this whole uh, understanding. So the Isra talks about the journey of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, okay, on the land. So the Najm talks about the journey of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the heavens. That's the Mi'raj, is the Najm, okay. So the Isra, the land journey from Mecca to Jerusalem, that journey. Okay, is mentioned in Surah Al-Isra, this surah that we're about to study. 
And this event takes place to show the Prophet ﷺ because he had just gone through the Amul Huzn. Uh, his his uncle Abu Talib had passed away. Khadija radiallahu anha, she had passed away. And uh, the event of Ta'if had just happened. And you know the dua of the Prophet ﷺ during that occasion. So all these things had happened. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet here that no, you are the custodian. You are the custodian of Jerusalem. And therefore, you are the custodian of the previous scriptures now. Meaning you are now in the place of where those previous scriptures were. You are the one who is now designated. And this is where the final, most decisive battle will take place. And therefore, two groups are being mentioned here. The Zionists, the Yehud, and the Hanud. The Yehud and Hanud. The pagans are mentioned here in the surah. In, in Surah Najm, it's specifically only the pagans. Over here, it's mostly the Zionists, okay? And specific, ref, specific references to the Zionism in the surah are mentioned also. This is a very fantastic, a very awesomely deep, 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 deep surah, okay? You can't even just begin to uh, understand this, uh, and nor can I. Uh, now, this surah has a key, it mentions four, uh, you can say, uh, it, it, the surah, we're going to just go into those verses right now in just a little bit. It mentions four phases of the history of the Jewish people from the beginning to the time of the Prophet ﷺ, the four phases are being mentioned, okay? And so that, and that is a very big key. There's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, all those things will come to my ummah that came to Bani Israel. Meaning historic, like two shoes of a pair. Like if you put two shoes of two shoes together, you can see the similarities between those two, two shoes. The same is the similarity, not just as an ummah, as an ummah and also, other ahadiths that mention as an individual. If one of them, if you saw the interview we had with uh, Dr. Omar, if one of you goes into a lizard's hole, then if one of them went into a lizard's hole, then you will also go into a lizard's hole. Okay? You will be cold-hearted just as they, they had become cold-hearted, you can say, as Dr. Omar pointed out. Okay? Now, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and you know, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, as you say, as we see in Surah Al-Kahf and Surah uh, and Surah Al-Bani Israel, it starts with Subhanallah, and uh, Allah being pure, Allah being above, Allah being a transcendent, uh, and Alhamdulillah, these two come to complete a whole. Okay, and you also find this in Salah, for example, you start with Subhanakallahumma. And then you say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So you find this relationship, as the Prophet himself has said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Subhanallah, Nifsul Mizan, Walhamdulillah, Tamla'u. Subhanallah is half the weight, Walhamdulillah, Tamla'u. Alhamdulillah completes that weight. Walhamdulillah, Ma Bayna Samawati Wal Arf. In the same way, you have the two, uh, the Adhkar that are very famous, Subhanallah, Bihamdi, Subhanallah, Al Azim, right? So this, again, relationship between subhanallah and alhamdulillah, these two surahs have this same relationship. And these two surahs are the key to, to, to understanding the, the system that, or what will be wrong. This surah uh, and the surah al-kahf will be, fo are the keys to understanding the end of times. Okay, because the surah, they come in pairs. And so surah al-kahf protects you against the jal. And this is its twin surah. Okay, so you have to uh, understand this. Okay, so we will take it. Uh, from here. So, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بأبده ليلة من المسجد الحرام uh, Allah is uh, far transcendent, far transcendent, far transcendent is the one who took his servant, his abd ليلة من المسجد الحرام on the night from Masjid al-Haram from the sacred masjid okay, إلى Masjid al-Aqsa to that mosque that was far away from meaning Mecca okay at that time, it was the farthest uh, masjid from Mecca. Okay, and Alladhi uh, barakna hawlahu, and that which Allah had blessed, what was around it, li nuriyahu to show the Prophet min ayatina to show him, meaning the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, our signs. Now, Allah blessed it, meaning what 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 is around it is blessed in different ways. Number one, 
in the in the in the in the traveling of of, of Isra and Mi'raj, the Prophet ﷺ was shown the areas around Jerusalem. Okay, like he went and he saw the the grave of Musa alayhi so on and so forth. This area is blessed because the Prophet ﷺ was taken around it and shown many great signs in that trip of the Prophet ﷺ. In Jerusalem, he led the prayers with all the prophets uh, there, Arwah being there, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and uh, it's also blessed because it has many of the prophets of Allah, some, some uh, of the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Many of the prophets are buried in this area, right? min ayatina, and so we would show him our signs. Even the prophets are buried, and he sees like Musa alayhi salatu wasallam standing and praying in his uh, qabr, in his grave. He's praying, in, so that was the spiritual reality of what the prophet was being shown. Okay. And uh, of course, like I mentioned, the barakna ma hawlahu linuriyahu min ayatina. Allah blessed what is around it, and He Allah was showing him our. He said, "We're going to show him our signs." Meaning, Allah is going to show him His signs, uh, and this is also to show him that even though the situation with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his ummah right now in Mecca is bleak, then it looks like that there's no light at the end of the tunnel from a worldly perspective. But no. This is where the Ummah will come, and this is where the, the first phase of that happened in the time of Umar bin Khattab when he came and and opened Jerusalem for uh, for the first time. Okay, and now uh, then after that, Salahuddin Ayyubi. Keep this in mind as we talk about the history of Bani Israel. And the third na will be now when after uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam comes back. Innahu huwa samiul basir, and indeed Allah is all hearing. He hears all the things from the present, future, past as one, and he sees all things as present, future, and future and past as one. Okay? So Subhanallahi Asra bi Abdihi Layla min al Masjid al Harami il al Masjid al Aqsa al Ladi Barakna Hawlahu li Nuriahu min Ayatina in Nahu was Samuel Basir. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa atayna Musa al Kitaba, and we gave Musa alayhi salatu wasalam the law, the book. وَجَعَلْنَا هُدًا لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ And we made it guidance for Bani Israel. Over here, Quran is Hudan لِلنَّاسِ Quran is guidance for mankind. Even for Ramadan, it says, شَهْ رَمَضَانِ أَلَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ And over there is, in Surah Al-Baqarah, يَا يُهَا النَّاسِ أُعْبُدُوا يَا يُهَا النَّاسِ O mankind, أُعْبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ okay. But who can benefit this with this Quran? هُدًا للمتقين. So taqwa is the key. To be able be able to benefit from Quran, Allah tatakhidu min duni wakila, and the summary of that was that don't take any other partners, other than me as the disposer of your affairs. Let give it, put it in my hands. And again, this is the problem with the ummah that of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam today that we look to the White House or we took look to China or we look to different places other than looking to Allah subhanahu wa taala. And they had the same problem. Dhurri, and who are you? What favors Allah has given you? From when you didn't even exist. Man hamalna ma Nuh, and you are the from the progeny of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. You know, he had three 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 sons from which the uh, progenies started Ham, Sam, and Yafith. So this is the Sam, the children of Sam. Innahu kana abdan shakura. Indeed, he was a servant of Allah, so grateful, so gracious to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you become ungrateful, then you make others because you're like, oh, well, I'm, you're ungrateful to Allah. You feel un Allah is not the uh, able to, you're ungrateful to Allah, so you stop taking Allah as the disposer of your affairs, as the one who's going to help you, right? Then you seek help from the, the what you consider as the many gods of the world, okay? Now over here starts the, even though this ayah number three is the beginning of, you can say, the history of Bani Israel, but the real history will start from ayah number four now. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَدَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ وَقَدَيْنَا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a decision. A very, وَقَدَيْنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, uh, made a qada, a command, إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Regarding Bani Israel, to Bani Israel, fil kitab, in his law, in his law, meaning the sunnah of Allah, lan tajida sunnah Allah, the sunnah of Allah, how Allah deals with people, how Allah deals with nations, there are laws there, these spiritual laws there. So either it could mean it was in their book, it was written that they would become corrupt, and 
they did become corrupt. Or it can mean that it was the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that وَقَضَيْنَا إِلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ uh, And we ordained it upon Bani Israel in the book, meaning the book in the law. Uh, this word kitab, as I've mentioned before, kutiba alik, means something is written, something is ordained, okay? So, either it was in their books, okay? What? لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّةٍ You will cause fitna in the world, uh, you will cause fasad in the world twice. وَلَتَعْلُنَّ عَلُوًّ كَبِيرًا And you will, in your fasad, reach a great level of of, of arrogance and, 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 and pride, you know, you can say. So, now what is this referring to? This ayah is referring to, this ayah, these, these por- this portion of the Qur'an can be taken in two ways. Sheikh Sha'arawi takes it one way, Imam Ibn Kathir takes it the other, other way. I want to explain it the way Imam Ibn Kathir does, because that is actually historically more valid and more, this is, it, it's more in congruency with Surah Al-Kahf and Surah Al-Isra. But the other one, I will also point that out too, okay? So, this is until the time of the Prophet ﷺ, until he was the Messenger of Allah, meaning uh, until the time he was appointed prophethood by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fasad in the world had been done twice by Bani Israel. Okay. The other meaning of this ayah is, وَقَضَيْنَا إِلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ And we uh, ordained towards Bani Israel in the book. Meaning in the Quran, you can say then, لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ You will cause corruption in the world twice. وَلَتَعْلُنَّ عَلُوًّا كَبِيرًا With a great amount of arrogance. The first one would be at the time of the Prophet himself, and the second is now in the modern age, okay, where that dies for ends. So these are the two, you can say, translations of this ayah. The more correct is the first one. And that is more significant, as you will see. When you see the bigger picture, you'll see that one is more sig- significant. And this point that we make with this ayah is actually in another ayah. So that uh, will uh, we will say, see that. So Allah says, وَقَضَيْنَا إِلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ And we ordained. Okay? Uh, and it was put into command in the book, فِي الْكِتَابِ لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ You will cause corruption in the world twice. وَلَتَعْلُنَّ عَلُوًّا كَبِيرًا With great arrogance. Now, two uh, times they're causing fasad, and then two times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them, you can say, uh, respite, gives them time, gives them His mercy to, to grow again. Now, what are these four periods? Okay, this is very important to understand. The first was in the time of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, okay, when Musa alayhi salatu wasalam took them away from Pharaoh, they were in the desert, they disobeyed the Prophet when he said, let's go for jihad. All you have to do is enter the city and they will leave. And they said, اِذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَرَبُّكُمَا You and your Lord go. Right? You know, you did. You, you gave us manna and salwa and you did so many favors for us. So now you go and you fight for us. We're just going to sit right here. We're not going to fight. Okay. This led them to a punishment for 40 years. And then they were punished in the, in, 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 in the desert for 40 years. Until, you know, and then they were, uh, when they were in the desert, they were also divided according to their 12 tribes. Okay. And because now they were 12 tribes, they were bickering amongst each other. And then outside forces that were stronger than the 12 tribes would take on each individual tribe and hurt them and wound them until finally they went to a prophet of Allah, okay? They said, look, we're tired of this. We're getting, you know, uh, killed left, right, and center. Uh, and so please appoint a, a, a king for us. And then this is where the, the, the hakuma, the, the government of Talut, then after Talut, Ta'ud, right? And then after Ta'ud, Sulaiman So this was a ruling of a hundred years, okay? Where this was now the peak, okay? This was the peak. And then after this peak, they became, you know, this is what happens. You get the kingdoms and you get the dunya and then you become corrupt. So then from there, after the children of Sulaiman and, and, and the same thing, again, there's a similarity between this ummah and the previous ummah, except in the case of the Prophet wasallam, the Prophet and his companions, they obeyed the Prophet from the beginning. But again, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, this is the rise, three people. Over there is Talut, uh, Daud, and Sulaiman. 
alayhim salatu wasalam, this is their rise, okay? And then you have uh, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, radiallahu anhum, ajma'in, this was the rise. Then at the time of Ali, the ummah became split because Muawiyah, radiallahu an, did not accept the khilaf of Ali, radiallahu an, okay? And of course, Ali was right in this, just as a point, but that was our first rise, and this was their first rise, okay? That is being mentioned here, and you'll see the details of that coming in, right in, in the next few verses. Then they had a downfall, okay? Just I say, you, the, after the kingdom of Suleiman, the children of Suleiman and the tribes, they started to, uh, uh, to bicker amongst one another. Then just as happened in our, in our early history and happened in their early history, Assyrians came from the north to Bani Israel. And we had the crusaders come from the north to the Abbas, uh, to the, uh, to, uh, in the Abbasid Empire. Okay, so you had the Crusaders come and desecrate Masjid al-Aqsa. And over there you had the Assyrians come to Bani Israel and desecrate their, which was their Kaaba basically, their Kaaba, and it was desecrated. Then the second big punishment came in the hands of the Babylonians. They were taken away completely from Jerusalem and taken as captives. This is known as their period of captivity. The Jews were taken to Babylonia. This is where Harut and Marut and all, all of their, their the, a lot of their corruption in the world happened at this time. And they were taken over there in the state of this, uh, this slavery and captivity until then the second rise. So this is the, the rise from Talut, Daud, and Suleiman. Then they become corrupt and then there is a downfall. They get attacked from the north with the Assyrians. They get attacked from the east from the Babylonians. And then there is a second rise by Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam. Okay? Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam restores Jerusalem. He brings the people back from the captivity back to Jerusalem. Okay? In the case of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, our ummah, we had our first rise. And then after that, there was a long downfall. But the same thing. They got attacked by the Assyrians. We got attacked by the uh, the Crusaders. They got attacked by the, the Babylonians who took them as captives, we got attacked by the Tatas. Okay? Then, after this, they did Tawbah, and they repented to Allah. They, so I'm talking about their history again. So after their first rise, then their downfall, Uzair brings them back to Jerusalem. Then there's a second rise, there's the, the empire called the Maccabi power, which was probably greater in extent than even Sulaiman Alayhi kingdom. Okay? And... They, there was this Maccabi power. It was a big, uh, big, big empire of the, of the, of Bani Israel. Okay. This is a very important ummah. Remember, this ummah starts with Musa and Harun, two prophets. And it has a, a history of almost 1,500 years. By the time of the prophet, it's almost 2,000 years. Okay. And then, uh, so just not to be confusing, they have the rise, they have the fall. Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam at his, in his nubu'ah. This is why, they say Uzair ibn Allah, the Jews. They say Uzair is the son of God because he was the cause of their second rise. Okay, And this is why you find in the Bible it keeps talking about the coming back of Elijah because Elijah was the one who gave that second rise that allowed the Maccabi power to be established. What happened on our ummah after Salahuddin Ayyubi freed Jerusalem like Uzair wasalam, freed Jerusalem. Not, not much difference there. Okay, then there was a rise. We had the Ottoman Empire. They had the Maccabi power. Okay, and then again, they had kingdom and fame and all of that. And so then there was another downfall. This downfall, when it happened, there were different prophets. In the end of Bani Israel, the prophets were Harun, uh, Yahya, and Isa. They killed Zakaria, the Roman Empire, the West. Okay, so there was a Western takeover of the Muslim world. Just as it is today, which is the end, end of ending, you know, end of the this this uh, end times, because this is the last ummah. But this was that was their end times in a sense. So they they killed Zakaria, they killed Yahya, they were trying to kill Isa alayhi with the help and in conjunction with the Romans, with the help of the ulama, the Pharisees and the Sadducees at that time, right? So then finally, Allah subhanahu wa taala then said, okay, that's it. In 70 AD, then the temple fell. And then they were not haramun ala qariyatin. Haram. It is haram to go back to that city until Ya'juj and Ma'juj come out. 
And so now that they have gone back to Jerusalem, this is a clear sign that Ya'juj and Ma'juj have come out. Now the is issue of Ya'juj and Ma'juj will come into the Kahf also. I will talk in more detail at that time. Okay. Now, uh, so after, so when, after they fought, you know, the final was they tried to kill Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And so then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they had their diaspora where they had to leave the city. The city was destroyed. The Jews went into the Roman Empire and into different parts of the world. And, uh, in, 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 and they had survived in the Muslim world also. So now this is the history that is being mentioned here. Okay. So now keep this in these four phases in mind. Okay. So of the two, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْضُ أُولَاهُمَا When the first of that facade that you were doing, then when we raised against you, when the first of that promise happened, okay. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْضُ أُولَاهُمَا When the first of those promises happened, بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ إِبَادًا لَنَا We sent our servants. Allah is saying this for the non-Muslims, against the Muslims, meaning Bani Israel. Uli ba'sin shadid. They were of such mighty power, warring power. This is the same now words you'll find in Tudkaf. Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iraja qayyiman liyunzira ba'sin shadid. Here, ba'sin shadid, same word. Fajasu khilal al-tiyar. This happened when the in, in the, in the, from the Assyrians and then from the Babylonians from the east. In our case, it was the, when the Tatars came from the east, so they had the Crusades from the north, they take over Jerusalem and it, they keep it with them until the coming of Salahuddin Ayyubi. Then from the east came Tatars and their strength is, is well known as in history, the Changez Khan strength, Uli Ba'sin Shadid. And Allah calls them our servants and in fact, Genghis Khan used to say, I am the hammer of God, right? Because uh, the character of the Muslims had gone down and, and now Muslims were being punished. Allah's sunnah doesn't change. So Allah is telling us here, what I did to them, I will do to you if you behave the same way. Okay? And who, rele who released the Jews, meaning the Muslims of that time, from their captivity Right under the da'wah of Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam, who released them was Zulqarnain, Cyrus the Great. He was the king who released them. This is why Jews love Cyrus the Great. And this is why the Bible calls him Zulqarnain. And I have a whole video on the word Zulqarnain in the Bible. Okay, Because when the Jews were asking these questions to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, who is Zulqarnain, they knew it from where? They knew it from their books. Okay, That is a whole uh, thing that I will come to inshallah. You can see my videos. I'll see how much detail I go into because I don't, I, this is supposed to be a short tafsir. When the first of those promises came that you did facade in the world, well then, the result is, we will raise our servants against you, and they will have great warring capability. They will even enter into your houses. You know, for the Tatar in the Muslim history, when they came from the East, it was said a female Tatari would tell a male, a Muslim man, stay right here, don't move. I'm going to go get my knife and then I'm going to come and kill you. And the man would be too scared to move from his place. And there's a long, you can say, uh, uneventful and depressed, depressing story of the uh, of events that had, had taken place with the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at that time. وَكَانَ وَعْضًا مَفْعُولًا And this is the promise of Allah. It will happen. Okay? It, it's fulfilled. It's already done. Okay? وَكَانَ وَعْضًا مَفْعُولًا It is already done. Then Allah said, ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَا لَكُمْ كَرَّةً Okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then we restored you. We gave you victories. We gave you strength. We made you a strong civilization. We brought you back to Jerusalem. Okay? And we extended you with wealth and with children. And we gave you tremendous manpower. Now there's so much wisdom in this, in, in, in how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restores a civilization. Okay? And uh, so... And the other thing, uh, I will mention another thing, inshallah, uh, in just uh, a second. Then Allah says, In ahsamtum ahsantum li anfusikum. If you do good, you do good for yourself. Wa in asatum falaha. And if you do evil, then it is on you. Okay? Then what happened? You, after doing good, turned back to evil. Okay? 
فإذا جاء وعد آخرة when our second promise came ليسوا وجوهكم so that your faces would be ruined okay again this is when Titus the Romans they had taken over Jerusalem destroyed Jerusalem brought down every brick this is why that wailing wall is not their temple I have a whole discussion on this they want they want that they want Masjid Al-Aqsa but Masjid Al-Aqsa is not where their temple was and the proof of that is in this ayah first of all Allah calls it Masjid you know how Umar radiallahu anhu when he went and he didn't pray in the Christian church because he thought that they would Muslims might make that as an excuse to take over the church so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not take Prophet Muhammad to the temple of Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam so that the Muslims might take over it no well, the Prophet prayed in a place that's a hundred meters away from that Haikal Sulaimani, which is in the city of David. That's a whole very important discussion in regards to Zionism. Because they want, and, and these religious Jews, they think the Wailing Wall, even the Bible, even the Christians should know Jesus said every stone would be destroyed. And this ayah says the same thing. So Allah says, and we sent Titus the Roman, the Roman, the Roman Titus against you. And he entered into your sacred masjid like they did the first time, meaning the Tataris. No, sorry, I mean the, the uh, Babylonians. Okay. In our case, uh, this is now going to happen the second time. So they have, if Bani Israel, because the problem, all those things will come to you that came to Bani Israel. If Masjid Aqsa was taken from Bani Israel twice, and then specifically mentioned in Quran, then Masjid Aqsa will be taken away from you twice. So the first time restored by Salahuddin Ayyubi, second time will be restored by the uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Okay? So Allah says, وجوهكم, So that Allah will ruin your faces, right? And uh, sadden your faces, okay? لِيَدْخُلُوا الْمَسْجِدَ And they, you will enter the masjid كَمَا دَخَلُوهُ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً Like they did the first time. وَلِيُتَبِّرُوا مَا عَلَوْ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Allah will destroy and put in complete destitute that, that city. And this is what happened that Joseph, the great historian, he also mentions this. I have a whole video on really that there's nothing left there. There was no there was no wall, there was no wailing wall, there was nothing left there. Okay? So now, how did they come to the idea of the wailing wall? This has to do with magic. And this has to do with magicians. And so uh, that if, video of mine you should uh, watch on in, in, this, in this regard. And now that they're in their diaspora, that city was destroyed, Jerusalem was destroyed, and they're all over the world, some of the Jews had come to Medina with specific knowledge that the last prophet would come here. Now Allah is saying to them, Asa rabbukum an yarhamakum. Look, perhaps Allah can still have mercy upon you. Wa in uddum udna. Right? And uh, if you return, then Allah will return to you. If you do tawbah, then Allah will, right? If you turn from the, the, the sins that you're doing, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we will return to you. Wa ja'alna jahannama lil kafirina hasira. And you know, if you uh, are, but otherwise, we already have the Jahannam is ready to go. I mean, it's ready to take over you. And uh, it is a prison uh, for you already made. Uh, but if you show uh, and you accept the da'wah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you accept his call, then you know, then this is good for you. Okay. Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, In, Inna hadha al-Qur'an, indeed this Qur'an, yahdi lillati hiya aqwamu. It is the Quran that guided guides to that which is most right. وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ And it gives good news to the believers that do good deeds. أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا For them is a very big reward. Okay? So, uh, meaning, this Quran now is the final book. And now you have to follow the Prophet wasallam. And this Qur'an has the guidance that you need now. And this is the guidance that is being given to Prophet Muhammad wasallam. And if Allah gives you good tidings, you do good deeds. And, the, and, and for them will be a big reward. And if you don't enter into the mercy of Allah and accept the Qur'an and the Prophet, in وَأَنَّ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ The real problem is the lack of belief in the hereafter. This is what doesn't allow characters to be not 
that doesn't allow characters to be changed. This is why from Surah Al-Mulk all the way to Surah Al-Nas, the biggest emphasis of Quran is on the Day of Judgment because that's what changes character. The belief I have to stand before Allah. Not just the belief in Allah, but the fact that I have to stand before Allah and answer for Him, that motivates a person to take the right action. And as for those people who don't believe in the hereafter, we have prepared for them a very grievous, a very painful punishment. Okay? Now over here, ayah number 11 is very important. Ayah number 11 talks about a very important attitude of humans. Man asks Allah, or man does dua to Allah, for sharr, for evil, Thinking he's asking Allah for good. You know, Allah says, Asa antuhibu shay'an wa huwa sharrun lakum. Maybe you love something that's actually bad for you. Asa antakrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum. And it may be that something is uh, good for you, but you see it as bad. Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi kudratika wa bi ilmika. Allah, I ask you of what your kudra, your, your power, and by your knowledge, of what you know that is good for me. This is one of the parts of dua of istikhara. What you know, not what I know. This is why we should always ask Allah what, for what is khayr, what is good. Not according to what I know. And if we sometimes do dua, we should say, Allah, give me this if you know it's good for me. If it's not good for me, then let it be. And you have to know, if Allah didn't give it to you after that dua, it's because it was not good for you. وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ ajula, But man is hasty. You think you only see the immediate, right? And this the, this ayah connects a lot with the the uh, story of uh, Khidr and Musa in Sutul Kahf because it is about how you see things and how you see reality, right? And what was really good for them versus what was not so good for them, right? He put a hole in the boat, not good for them temporarily, but good for them in the long run because then that pirate couldn't take that boat away from them and they can continue doing their 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 way of earnings because of that, okay? Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَتَيْنَ This subject will come back. You will see it comes back again and again in different ways. You will see this. But over here Allah says, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change from history to His signs, from His signs to history, like this. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talk, is, it has more than one audience at, at any given time. Okay, Allahu A'lam. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَةٍ And we made the night and the day. And notice how night is mentioned before day. Because the default in the universe is night. Okay. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَةٍ فَمَحَوْنَا آيَةَ اللَّيْلِ Okay. We caused the night to disappear. وَجَعَلْنَا آيَةَ النَّهَارِ مُبْصِرَةً And we made the sign of the day a place where you can see so you can seek the fadl of Allah, the bounties of Allah, the favors of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the system of the solar system, the stars and everything. The days and the night, Allah made it. So you will know the years and you can count the days. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we have put every, we have, uh, وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَصَّلْنَاهُ تَفْصِيلًا in, in, Meaning, uh, i.e., this Qur'an, okay? Uh, and everything we have set out in detail. Meaning, in its creation, it's perfect, it's there, the system is there for you to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even you can count and have a calendar by the day and the night, the system of day and night, okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكُلُّ الْإِنسَانُ أَلْزَلْنَاهُ طَائِرُ فِي أُنُقِي Okay, there seems to be something, uh, at least metaphorically or actually, Allahu A'lam, but something on our neck, right? That is our, uh, kind of like a, a, a register, you can say, of our goodness or badness. Generally, طَائِرَ uh, is used in the negative sense, but over here it's used in the general sense. وَكُلُّ الْإِنسَانِ أَلْزَمْنَاهُ Okay, and we have imposed upon every human beings uh, a, an omen on their neck of their being good or bad. وَيُخْرِجُ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take that out on the Day of Judgment. كِتَابًا يَلْقَوْنَهُ مَنْشُورًا And it will be a record for them that will be put in front of them to uh, spread, that will be spread before them. And they will be able to read it. And the Prophet said about this record that will be given. Even an illiterate person will be able to read his record on the Day of 
judgment. Okay? And it will be said to him when he's given this book, Iqra' kitabak. Read your book. Kafa bi nafsika al-yawma alayka hasiba. It is enough for you today, this book, this record. It'll tell you what you did. Okay? Whether you're literate or unliterate, you'll be able to read that book. وَمَنْ اِحْتَدَى فَإِنَّمَا يَحْتَدِي لِنَفْسِي Whoever is guided, he's guided for his own self. Allah doesn't need you. You have to be guided for yourself. You have to answer Allah on the Day of Judgment alone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us uh, regarding this uh, this this affair of ours. وَمَنْ ظَلَّ فَإِنَّمَا يُذِلُّ عَلَيْهَا And whoever goes wrong, goes wrong, it's on him. وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ مِزْرَ أُخْرَى No one will hold, uh, bear the responsibility of anyone else. We are all fully and completely responsible for our actions on the Day of Judgment. And Allah's rule is, وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ الرَّسُولَ And we don't punish anyone until we send a messenger. وَإِذَا أَرَدْنَا أَن نُحْلِقَ الْقَرِيَةِ And Allah says, when we decide to destroy a nation, أَمَرْنَا مُطْرَفِيهَا Then we give affluency. Okay, we give the affluency to the rich. We make the rich richer and they become amarna mutrafiha, fafasaku fiha. And these rich people, the capitalists, notice what Allah is saying here, the capitalists, the rich, the affluent, okay, fafasaku fiha, and they disobey Allah. Okay, fahaka alayhi al fadamarnaha tadmira. And then our word, our sunnah, our way of doing things, our way of dealing with nation becomes true and we completely abolish them. And this happens, especially if a messenger has done the shahada, has done a witness, and then to a lesser degree if there's no prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there. Okay? وَكَمْ أَحْلَكْنَا مِنَ الْقُرُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ نُوحِ And how many people Allah says we have destroyed after after Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. وَكَفَى بِرَبِّكَ بِذُنُوبِ إِبَادِكَ خَبِيرًا بَصِيرًا Allah is alone. Allah doesn't have to give you a record, right? But Allah is enough to keep a record because Allah is خَبِيرًا بَصِيرًا He is fully aware of the real-time situation and He is fully able to see what is going on. وَمَنْ كَانَ And this is the real thing. And this is what we have to look at. Are our intentions mostly for dunya or mostly for akhirah? Uh, is mostly our struggle for dunya or for du- akhirah? Okay. Man kana yuridu al-ajila ta'ajjalna lahu fiha man nasha li man nurid. Whoever wants this, the here and the now. You want the here and the now. And this is the problem. You know, you'll see when I talk about the main theme of Stulkaf, you'll see this becomes clear how they're twin surahs. Because the, the theme of Stulkaf is very similar. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَ Whoever wants to hear and now, عَجَّلْنَا Okay, then we give it to him. We give it to him here and now. لَهُ فِيهَا For him of it, a portion of it. مَا نَشَاءَ As much as we want to give it, we'll give it to you. But if that's your intention, we'll give it to you. And لِمَنْ نُرِيدُ And whoever we want. We can make a Bill Gates or Bill uh, or Trump. And, and the other person who wants dunya, we can give him nothing. Right? ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَا And then we make جَهَنَّم Lahu Jahannam, for him Jahannam. Yaslawnaha madhmuma madhura. And he will be thrown in there. He will be censored, not able to com- com- uh, complain or a madhura and completely banished in humiliation. Waman arad al akhirah. And whoever has the intentions for the hereafter. Wasa'a laha sa'yaha. And he makes a struggle for its str- He makes a struggle for that. Wasa'ya laha. And he struggles for the hereafter. Sa'yaha. Wa huwa mu'minun. And he believes in Allah. Fa'ulaika kana sa'yuhum mashkura. Their struggle, their efforts for the akhirah will be appreciated. Okay. And so we have to, as an ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, really take a look at what are our intentions. Right. Kullun numiddu ha'ulai wa ha'ulai min ata'i rabbik. Look, every party. Right, whether this one or that one, they're going to be given from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Wa ma kana ata'u rabbuka mahdura, and Allah's giving is not restricted to one group or the other group. Mu'min or kafir, it's not restricted by those rules. Okay. Unzul kaifa fassalna fadlna baghdhum ala baghd. Wal akhiratu akbaru darajati wa akbaru tafdila. But you know, 
Over here, everything is temporary. Even if you have the best comfort, the latest and the greatest of whatever, and you're running after dunya, whatever, it's temporary. But the hereafter is forever. Allah says, look how we have favored some over the others, right? The Prophet is the greatest human being, but he wasn't rich, but he was the greatest human being. Imagine his position now forever. His position forever and ever will be what? وَالْآخِرَةُ أَكْبَرُ And the hereafter, what comes after is bigger. This is other, وَالْآخِرَةُ أَكْبَرُ What is coming after, meaning after this dunya, is bigger. دَرَجَاتٍ وَأَكْبَرَ تَفْضِيلًا in, in, in ranks, okay, in degrees it's bigger. وَأَكْبَرُ تَفْضِيلًا And it is greater in distinction. Okay, what is here is temporary and you're running after only this dunya because ultimately we believe in this dunya more than we believe in the hereafter. Now, from here, Allah says, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. Don't make any partners to Allah. Take Him as your source of everything. Okay, and believe in what He said about this life and the next life and the whole of it. وَلَا تَجْعَلْ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. فتقد مَظْلُومًا مَذْحُورًا Then you'll be sitting there, again, forsaken and مَخْذُولًا and in, in, in humiliation on the day of judgment. Now, after this is now ten, the Ten Commandments. Okay, the Ten Commandments are revealed to the Prophet ﷺ that were given to Musa ﷺ in the next uh, portion of this uh, of this surah. Okay, so the Ten Commandments are given. Uh, I would only point out because of the uh, lack of time uh, or, or the restriction of time. I don't want to make this a long tafsir, but I would show, the Ten Commandments are mentioned in the Bible in two places. And there's a lot of similarities, but there's some interesting differences. Very briefly, I'll just simply say one of the interesting differences is that the aspects of economics are missing. Meaning, to be fair in business and honest in business and to weigh things properly and wazinu bil qislas al mustaqim be fair in your measurements and and in in your economics that's missing in the bible but it's here in the quran okay so now let us begin with these 10 commandments so like i said these are the 10 commandments let me show you these are the 10 commandments in the old testament okay and uh, the 10 commandments in the new testament okay so there is different Ten Commandments, but according to Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu an, these are the Ten Commandments given in uh, in the Quran. Okay, So, there's no changing the word of Allah, and so what Allah has done is He's put portions of, or all of, Torah, Injil, and Zubur are in the Quran. Okay? وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ And your Lord has declared. Okay? Well, actually, this is very interesting because this word qada comes uh, in this surah a couple of times. And Allah has declared that no, that la ta'budu, wa qada rabbuka, and your Rabb has declared ta'budu, that you do not worship, you do not become an abd, illa iyahu, except him himself. And you do goodness to your parents. إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ إِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحْدَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا If one of them or both of them become old, uh, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا Don't say to them, Uff, Uff. This is when they're being in unreasonable, obviously. Because you're not going to say Uff if they're being reasonable. If they're being unreasonable, don't say Uff. وَلَا تَنْحَرْهُمَا And don't or, raise your voice over them. Don't, don't uh, yell at them. وَكُلْ وَقُلْ لَهُمَا And say to them, قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا And say a generous thing, be nice with them, okay? Even if they're being unreasonable. وَحْفِذْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحِ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ And lower on them your wings. Of, uh, lower your wings over them, مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّرْ هُمَا And do dua for them, that Allah have mercy upon them, both كَمَا رَبِّيَانِ صَغِيرًا Like Allah, I used to be small, so they had mercy upon me, so now you have mercy upon them. Do dua for them. وَرَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ مَا بِمَا فِي نُفُوسِكُمْ And Allah knows best what is in your hearts, what is inside you. إِن تَكُونُوا صَالِهِينَ فَإِنَّهُ كَانَ لِلْأَوَّابِينَ غَفُورًا If you are a good and righteous person, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving to the people who turn to Him. Okay? 
وآتي ذي وآتي ذي آتي ذي القربة حقه and give to the person who is ذي القربة who is your uh, relative his right okay uh, this is even on top of zakat okay والمسكين وابن السبيل and the person who can't help himself he's helpless miskin وابن السبيل and the one who's stranded while traveling this is absolutely the worst situation a person can be he's traveling and somebody took his wallet and he you know he and nowadays because you have the phone if you took your phone right your suitcase your vo- your wallet's gone your phone is gone we don't even know the numbers of people nowadays now he's completely stranded so help him if he says give me a phone i need to make a call to my wife to let her know i'm here somebody stole my phone you know ولا تبذر ولا تبذر and do not waste your, you know israf is when it's halal money you're wasting you're wasting halal money is israf tabzir is money you have gotten in haram ways okay ولا تبذر تبذرا and do not spend wastefully that money that itself first of all you got it haram and now you're using it for haram okay so in al mubadhirina Indeed, the people who are mubadhirin, who use, who get wealth falsely and then use it falsely. Inna al-mubadhirina kanu ikhwana shayateen. They are the brothers of the shayateen. Not just metaphorically, actually. Okay. Wa kana shaytanu li rabbihi kafura. And shaytan was a person who was to Allah kafur. Very ungrateful to Allah. Right. He was ungrateful for the favors Allah did to him. وَإِمَّا تُعْرِضَنَّ عَنْهُمْ إِبْتِغَاءَ رَحْمَةِ مِنْ رَبِّكَ And look, uh, if somebody comes to you, right? This person is waiting on you or he wants something for you. إِبْتِغَاءَ رَحْمَةِ مِنْ رَبِّكَ And he comes to you, but he's coming to you, but in his heart is he's seeking the mercy of Allah. You represent Allah's decree at that time. So you have to be nice to these people. Even if you have, don't have any. قُلْ لَهُمْ Say an easy word to them, a gentle word to them, right? Right? And if you have to let them go, go, you know, uh, uh, go back and you don't have anything, say to them a nice word. And then Allah says, Don't tie your hand to your neck. Like, you know, you're like tied like this. Your hand is on your neck, and you can't move your hand and put it in your pockets. And ولا تبسطها كل البسط. Nor extend your hands completely. Oh, okay, here, take everything. Nor extend your hands completely and give them everything. فتقعدوا ف فتقعدا ملوما محصورا. And then you'll just sit down, right? Uh, com- uh, com- blamed and 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 and. Uh, you know, just uh, regretting what what you have done. Okay. In the Rabbah ka yabsutu rizqali man yasha wa yaqdir. Allah increases the risk for whoever He desires, and He also restricts it. In no kana li ibadhi khabiran basira. Indeed, He is for His servant khabiran basira. He has full information of what's going on live, and He can see everything. Wala taktul. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ خَشْيَةِ الْإِمْلَاكِ Nor kill your children out of the fear of poverty. نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُهُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ We feed them and you. Okay. إِنَّ قَتْلَهُمْ كَانَ خِطْأً كَبِيرًا Killing them is a big sin, a big mistake. وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الزِّنَا And don't go near zina, adultery. Or fornication. إِنَّهُ فَاهِشَةً وَسَأَ السَّبِيلَ It is very immodest, very indecent, it is very immoral, and it is a very evil path to take. وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ Don't kill any nafs. Don't kill any person. الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ Because life is sacred. That thing which Allah has made haram, meaning sacred. إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ Yes, if he's killed someone and he's brought to court and if the family, not the government, because the the state, it's interesting just to show you, in the case of zina, which is, you know, mentioned before, in the case of zina, it is the state in Islam, not in the modern Western courts in Islam, 
it is the state versus the person. If you did indecent things, it's you did zina, you got caught in zina. The state is responsible for capturing you and punishing you. In the case of murder, it's the opposite. The state is responsible for capturing you, bringing you in front of the family, and the family decides what will be done. For do, done, blood money is taken. You're completely forgiven, or they want revenge. Okay, and that is in the case if it was not done for a just cause. So illa bil haq, except for the right reason, which could be uh, somebody has rebelled against Islam and the Muslims, and number two. Uh, he's he's he killed somebody in in war in combat, okay, and uh and and number three he has done murder, okay, and then there may be other scenarios like fasad and so on and so forth that I mentioned in Quran also. ولا تقتلوا ولا نفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق and don't kill any nafs that Allah has made sacred except for the right reasons. ومن قتل قتل مظلوما فَقَدْ جَعَلْنَا لِوَلِيهِ سُلْطَانًا فَلَا يُصْرِفْ فِي الْقَتْلِ And whoever has been killed unwrongly, his his family, his wali, okay? His, uh, you can say, his the person who has authority over his situation, his, his you can say, who has attorney rights over his situation, لِوَلِيهِ uh, سُلْطَانًا He is the one who has authority, okay? Uh, uh, so his family will have authority. فَلَا يُسْرِفْ فِي الْقَطْلِ Okay, don't exceed the limits in killing. Okay, this is not something you want to do either as a family or as a uh, state or even as a person who is doing a crime. This is something you should stay away from. إِنَّهُ كَانَ مَنْصُورًا The person who is wronged, he is the one who is going to be helped and supported by law, by Islamic law, which now is, in this case, the law even in Torah. وَلَا تَقْرِبُ الْمَالَ الْيَتِيمِ And don't go near the wealth of the orphan. إِلَّا بِالَّتِي يَحْسَنْ Except in the most beautiful way. حَتَّى يَبْلُغَ الْأَشُدَّ Until he reaches the old age. Meaning a mature age. Not old age, sorry. A mature age. Don't give... Now somebody is an orphan, right? And you give him all his money. This is your mom and dad's money. And then he wastes it. You don't want to do that. You want to wait till يَبْلُغَ الْأَشُدَّ Until he reaches maturity. Then you bear, you sit him down. You Give him, this is how much your parents gave me. This is how much I spent on you. This is how much is left. This is now yours. You're going to be responsible. And I, let me give you the list of all the receipts and everything I spent until this time and so on and so forth. وَأَوْفُوا بِالْأَحَدْ And complete your promises. إِنَّ أَحْدَ كَانَ مَسْؤُولًا Allah will ask you for not fulfilling a promise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us. وَأَوْفُوا الْكَيْلِ and complete your measure when you're in the store and you're giving things based upon measurement. إِذَا كِلْتُمْ When you make a measurement. Nowadays we have machines, but even with machines you can cheat one way or the other. وَزِنُوا بِالْقِسْطَاسِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And weigh things in قِسْطَاسِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ In an even balance. ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ This is best. وَأَحْسَنُ تَعْوِيلًا And best in result. Meaning even for your business it's good. This is being honest is the best policy. And you know for Thousands and thousands of books, okay? Uh, there is a book about dishonesty, but there are very, very few books almost on actually being honest in business and the effect it has for business. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not pursue uh, that for which you have no knowledge. Okay, stay within and keep yourself within the world of knowledge. In sama. Indeed, your hearing, which is attached to your brain. Wal basara, which is attached to your brain. Wal fu'ad. And I've mentioned before, fu'ad is actually the brain. That thing that takes fa'idah of these two things is the brain. In sama wal basara wal fu'ad. Kullu ula'ika kana anhum mas'ula. These things, all of these three things. What you saw, what you did with your ears, what you did with your ears, what you did with your eyes, what you did with your brain, you know, your mind, you can say. Fu'ad is generally translated as heart, but it actually means not the emotion, it's the mind, okay? كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ أَنْهُ مَسْؤُولَ All these three things you will be responsible for on the Day of Judgment. وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَاحَ And don't walk on the earth as in, in proudness. Now, uh, let me, uh, I'm going to say some more things uh, about uh, uh, about the previous ayah. In 
إِنَّكَ لَنْ تُخْرِقَ الْأَرْضِ You can't just tear apart the earth. Because people either walk on the earth, you know, you've seen those people walk like as if they own the earth. They walk as if, Allah says, you can't tear the earth. وَلَنْ تَبْلُغَ الْجِبَالِ طُولَ Nor can you reach the heights of the mountain, right? So if you're trying to be proud, walking all, you know, heavy-footed on earth, and, 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 and you know, because عباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض حونا the, the true servants of Allah, they walk on the earth lightly, in a humble way. If you walk with arrogance, you know, your walking with arrogance doesn't cut the earth. And your walking with arrogance and putting your chest out doesn't make you reach the mountains. Okay? So, as regards to this ayah, وَلَا تَقْفُوا مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Don't pursue that for which you have no knowledge. This is what Islam did as far as, this is what Islam did to, to ideas or to occults or things that fall within the realm of superstition. Knowledge is, valid knowledge is only of two types. Okay? And this is why Allah then says, what is this knowledge? In sama'a, what your ears, wal basara, wal fu'ad. These are the apparatus of knowledge. How to get knowledge, there's two types. There's revelation which is the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Either there's revelation or there's acquired knowledge. Man has acquired knowledge and acquired knowledge and acquired knowledge and acquired knowledge through experimentation, through discovery, through even the scientific method could be added here. But man has acquired. But don't go. It was Islam that took the world out of superstition and brought them into the world of knowledge. Both knowledge, acquired knowledge and revealed knowledge. And they go side by side. Okay? Acquired knowledge and revealed knowledge. Even before Islam, the type of logic that you had was there was no induction. There was only de uh, you deduce. And they, because information was limited, you can only deduce, 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 deduce. So, for example, an example of this uh, is that, you know, Aristotle thought men, women have less teeth than men because they were smaller. Right? But he was completely wrong on this, actually. So it was deducing knowledge. Islam came and gave us inference. Islam came and gave us induction. Look at the sky. Look at the stars. Look and in, in, you can induce from there knowledge. Get, looking at the holistic picture, okay. So wala takfu ma laysalaka bihi ilm. Okay. Don't pursue that which you don't have knowledge for. In nasamaa wal basara wal fuad and your mind. Okay. Uh, you are responsible in front of Allah for this. This is knowledge. This is knowledge, and the knowledge based upon these things is what you're responsible for to, in terms of do's and don'ts. Okay? And then, uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the ayah that I just mentioned about don't walk upon the earth, right? As if you're arrogant. You can't. Tear apart the earth, nor can you reach the height of the mountain Tula in, in height. All of these things, if you do the you know, these things are detested and disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, من الحكمة. These are the things that Allah is revealing to you, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, of hikma of wisdom. ولا تجمع تجعل مع الله إلها آخر. And the first and the last is the same. Don't make any partners with Allah. فتلقى في جهنم. You will be thrown into the uh, to the hellfire. ملوما blameworthy مدحورا and banished, thrown and pushed into the hellfire. Okay. Now. Uh, not killing a human soul, human soul being sacred, respecting your parents, being careful in regards to the outcasts of the community like the yatim, the out, uh, you know, somebody in difficulty, being nice with the people, but help the poor people, but don't think you're the one that's helping them. Know that when they come to you, they come to you with Allah's mercy in mind. So be careful how you treat them. But at the same time, you're the one, not the one. That is going to take care of their situation. So Allah says, keep it in the middle. Uh, don't keep your hands to your neck, but don't extend them out totally. And then you're blaming yourself, sitting blameworthy. Uh, don't do that. Because ultimately it's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ مِمَّا أَوْحَى إِلَيْكَ رَبُّكَ This is of the things Allah has revealed to you, your Lord has revealed to you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And be just when you weigh things, be just. This is what you need for a good society. 
Okay. Anybody teach this in school nowadays? Any of the anybody teach these things in 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 school in education? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes the subject to the pagans. Up till here it was talking to Bani Israel. But for a short you know, there are parts where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to talk to the idol worshippers uh, also. asfakum rabbukum bil banin. Then this, you know, the, the, the pagans, the Arabs uh, of, of Mecca, the Quraysh, they had made the daughters, the angels, the daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So over here, the subject is, أَفَأَسْفَاكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ بِبَنِينَ It has uh, Allah, meaning your Rabb, uh, chosen for you sons. وَاتَّخَذَ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنَاثَ And for himself, he's chosen daughters for angels. For you, you want sons. So you choose the better for yourself. And for Allah, saying Allah has malaika, he has the angels as daughters for himself. إِنَّكُمْ لَا تَقُولُونَ قَوْلًا عَظِيمًا You don't say except a very humongous, enormous thing. Uh, a, a, uh, you say a very, very wrong, uh, great, a great thing, that a great wrong. وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ You'll find the word Qur'an in this surah over and over again. وَلَقَدْ And you'll also find this in Surah Al-Kahf. وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لِيَذَكَّرُوا And we have certainly... Uh, made tasrif in Quran. We've uh, made many uh, different, uh, showing something this way and then showing it from another angle and giving one example and giving example of history and then giving example from our signs. So we have uh, diversified its contents is a good way to put it. وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لِيَذَّكَّرُوا So that may, you may be reminded وَمَا يَزِيدُهُمْ إِلَّا نَفُورًا But it does not increase uh, the uh, the people, the disbelievers, except in more rebellion, except more aversion to the truth. Don't you think, Allah says, if there was any God with him, as you are all saying, that these are daughters of Allah, meaning they're also gods, and there are other gods, they have their pagan gods. Okay, if they're all here, then why will these gods be willing to be on earth instead of going to the throne of the heavens? Then they each would seek out a way to become the owner of the throne. Right? But this is not the case. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala yaquluna aluwan kabira. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is transcendent and far above what they say. Amma yaqulun, from what they say, aluwan kabira. It is a very arrogant, big arrogant thing uh, that they say. Okay, But the fact is that when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, Tusabbihu lahu ma fis sama, Tusabbihu lahu samawati wa sab, Tusabbihu lahu samawati wa sab'u wa al-ard, wa man fi hinna. But the reality is that everything in the heavens, the seven heavens and the seven earth, they do tasbih of Allah. They're glorifying Allah. They declare Allah's transcendence, Allah's greatness. وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُصَبِّهُ بِحَمْدِ And there is not a thing, shay'in, even in Adam, except it does tasbih of Allah. وَلَكِن لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ But you don't understand their tasbih. This can be, you know, if somebody makes, if it, there's a great carpenter, a great painter, a great painter makes a paint, and the painting sh is itself glorifying the painter. Or the par car great carpenter makes some great chair. That chair is glorifying that carpenter, right? In the same way, this whole universe is glorifying Allah in, in that sense. Or, not just in the metaphorical sense, but in the real sense, Allah has given them an ability to say, and we can't understand. So Allah says, لا تفقهون تصبيحهم You don't understand their tasbih. إِنَّهُ كَانَ حَلِيمًا غَفُورًا Indeed, Allah is forbearing. You know, Allah has forbearance, and Allah is forgiving. Allah is merciful. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنِ 
when you, O Prophet sallallahu you recite Quran upon them. جَعَلْنَا بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ حِجَابًا مستورة. We put a barrier between you and them. Even though they're reading Quran, you're, you're reading Quran in them and it's not affecting them because there's a hijab. There is a screen between you. There's like something between you and them. Right? And, uh, and, and so... وَجَعَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّةٌ And what is that? And we put in their hearts uh, a covering. أَيَّفْقَهُوهُ That they should understand what is being said to them from the Qur'an because their intentions are bad. وَفِي آذَانِهِمْ وَقْرَىٰ And in their heart, in their ears is deafness. وَإِذَا ذُكِّرْتَ رَبُّكَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَحْدَهُ And why is that? وَإِذَا ذُكِّرْتَ And when you remind them of the one God, what is this? He's talking about one God, one God, all the time one God. Right? وَإِذَا ذُكِّرْتَ رَبَّكَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ And when you re- tell them about, remind them about Allah in the Qur'an, وَحْدَهُ His Tawheed, His Oneness. وَلَّوْ عَلَىٰ أَدْبَارِهِمْ نَفُورًا They turn their backs and just go go in aversion. Okay? نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا, بما يَسْتَمِعُونَ بِهِ You know, they would show their friends, they would go to the Prophet and pretend like they're really listening carefully and say, Yes, Muhammad, tell me, what is it that you teach? Oh, yeah, let me listen to your teachings, because this is how the Prophet would do it. The Prophet would read Quran to them. This is the way, this is the prophetic way to t- bring them back to the Book of Allah, to the Message of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَسْتَمِعُونَ بِهِ We know fully well, Allah says, what they're listening to. Is yastamiuna ilayk when they are listening to you. We know what's exactly going into that ear. They're not, you know, a lot of times people are talking to you and you're not really listening to them. You have your own, you know, thing going on there. Uh, whom najwa. And when they go back, do their najwa, they do their secret count, count, counseling. You know, I'm going to pretend, I'm going to go there, listen to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and then I'm going to come back and say to those people that are thinking about his message that, oh, I, I heard it fully, I heard it completely, but you know, I, my, my wise decision is that this is not a valid message, etc., etc. وَإِذْ هُمْ نَجْوَىٰ إِذْ يَقُولُ الظَّالِمُونَ إِنْ يَتَّبِعُونَ إِلَّا رَجُلًا مَسْحُورًا and when these wrongdoing people go back to, right, and they say, this man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he's nothing but doing magic. He's affected by magic. It's nothing more than that, you know. We have listened to his conversation. Unzur kayfa darabu lakal amthal. And look how they, uh, how they strike, uh, for you comparisons. Okay. This is going to come up, uh, فَظَلُّوا فَلَا يَسْتَطِئُونَ السَّبِيلَ They've gone a wrong way and they don't have the ability to come back to the straight path. They've gone to the point of no return. وَقَالُوا أَإِذَا كُنَّ عِظَامًا وَرُفَاتًا أَإِنَّا لَمَبْعُوثَ خَلْقًا جَدِيدًا And they say, when we are bones and crumbled particles, رُفَاتًا أَإِنَّا لَمَبْعُوثَ خَلْقًا جَدِيدًا Will we be raised as a new creation? قُلْ كُونُ هِجَارَةً أَوْ حَذِيدًا Even if you are stones or even if you are iron, yes, you know. Uh, and, and that's interesting because there are uh, stone particles and iron particles in the human body, okay. أَوْ خَلْقًا مِمَّا كَبُرَ فِي صُدُورِكُمْ يَكْبُرُ فِي صُدُورِكُمْ Or even any other thing that might be you might think in your heart is even bigger than this, more difficult than this. Right, uh, that Allah will bring it back to life. فَسَيَقُولُونَ مَنْ يُعِيدُنَا And they say, who will bring us back? قُلْ الَّذِي فَطَرَكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّ The one who made you the first time is going to, the one same one who's going to bring you back. فَسَيُنْغِذُونَ إِلَيْكْ رُؤُوسَهُمْ وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هُوَ Right, and what happens is, they shake their heads, right? وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هُوَ When will this be? قُلْ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونُ قَرِيبًا Look, it can perhaps happen very, very near, very, very, at any time, you know, we say. يَوْمَ يَدْعُوكُمْ فَتَسْتَجِيبُونَ بِحَمْدِهِ وَتُذُنُّونَ إِنْ لَبِثُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا On that day, he will call you. And you will respond with praise of him. When you finally wake up in the Day of Judgment, even if you didn't believe him in the earth, you'll come to and say, yeah, yeah, I believe. He's so beautiful. You know, he's so great. He's powerful. He can do anything. He brought me back to life on that day. Right? And you'll think you were on earth only for a little bit of time. 
قل للعباد الذين يقولون التي هي أحسن and say and tell my servants Allah says to to say that which is best قل للعباد يقول التي هي أحسن say things in a good way okay إن الشيطان ينزع بينهم شيطان wants to cause division between human beings إن الشيطان كان للإنسان عدو مبينا indeed شيطان is a clear enemy to human beings إن ربكم إن ربك إن إن ربكم أعلم بكم indeed your رب knows you best okay إن يشاء يرحمكم أو إن يشاء يعذبكم if Allah wants to have mercy upon you, He'll have mercy upon you. If He wants to punish you, He'll punish you. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ وَكِيلًا And we've not made you a, a guardian over them, right? They have to choose for themselves. You can't, O oh, Prophet Wasallam, you can't force them, you can't choose for them, okay? وَرَبُّكَ uh, أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And your Rabb knows most Whoever is in the heavens and the earth, وَلَقَدْ فَضَّلْنَا بَعْضَ النَّبِيِّينَ عَلَىٰ بَعْضِ And, you know, because of this whole history of Bani Israel being mentioned and Prophet Muhammad being there, this question comes up, okay, which, you know, uh, the, the, the people who leave the main issue and come to the side issues, oh, which Prophet then was great? So Allah says, look, Allah has blessed some over the others. وَآتَيْنَا دَعُودَ زَبُورَ And Allah did give Da'ud Zabur, right? These are all great Prophets. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, Say, those people who you invoke, who you do dua to uh, That they are gods other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala They don't have the ability to help you When you're about to drown, they don't have the ability ability to help you. Only Allah helps you. وَلَا تَحْوِيلَ Nor can they change your situation. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change your situation. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ يَبْتَغُونَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمُ الْوَصِيلَةِ Okay? These are those who pray, who do dua, right? And seek a means of access to Allah. Okay? Which of them would be nearest? Ayyuhum akrabu wa yarjoon rahma. Who would be nearest to Allah, right? And seeking His mercy. Wa yakhafun adaba and fearing His punishment. In adaba rabbuka mahzura. Indeed, your the punishment of your Rabb is something that is to be feared. Okay? So those angels, ulaika ladina yadruna. Those are the angels that are praying. وَيَبْتَغُونَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ وَصِيلًا Seeking closeness to Him. أَيُّهُمْ أَيُّهُمْ أَكْرَبُ They also want which one is closer to Allah. وَيَرْجُونَ رَحْمَةً And seeking His mercy. يَخَافُونَ عَذَابًا Fearing His punishment. إِنَّ عَذَابَ رَبُّكَ كَانَ مَحْذُورًا Indeed, the punishment of your Lord is something that should be feared. It's not what you were saying, that they're angels and they're gods and, and you know, and no, this is the reality. They fear Allah and they do want to get close to Allah. But by being fearful of Allah, by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking his mercy of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the way to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how the angels get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that world. Now this will connect with the first ayah, the second ayah of Sutul, uh, of, uh, Sutul Kahf, the next surah. الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبد الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا طيما لينذر بأسا شديد A great war, a terrifying war is coming which the Prophet is called ملحمة وإن من قرية إلا نحن محلكوها There's not a single city or town that will not be destroyed Allah said قبل يوم القيامة Before the day of judgment أو معذبوها or it will be severely punished, adaban shadida, with a painful punishment, a great punishment. That's why it's also called malhamatul kubra. وكان ذلك في الكتاب مصطورة. And this is in the book of Allah. It is inscribed. It will happen. Then Allah subhanahu wa taala says, ما منع أن نرسل. Then Allah subhanahu wa taala says. Now over in this ayah, the discussion is about uh, continuing with the nahl. 
They were asking for a sign. Give us a sign. Give us a sign. Give us a sign. So Allah says, "Wa ma manaa an nursila bi ayati ayati illa an kathaba bihal awalun." Look, we've given signs before, and people have rejected them. This is not those that are going to believe are going to believe, and those reject that are going to reject. Wa atayna thamuda naqita mubsiratan fadhalamu biha. And for the people of Thamud, we gave them a camel coming out of a mount of a rock of a mountain for them to see what can be a greater sign than that. But they denied. Giving you a sign is not the criteria we'll believe when we see a sign. It actually has to do with the state of your heart, right? فَذَلَمُوا بِهَا وَمَا نُرْسِلُوا بِآيَاتِ إِلَّا تَخْوِيفَ Right? And we don't send a sign except it becomes a warning. And then that is giving you actually less time because then once the 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 sign is shown, then you have to believe, and and there's less time then. So this is in the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa taala that He was not giving them that sign that they were asking for or demanding for. Okay, the next ayah is uh, very important also. Allah subhanahu wa taala says. Now over here is a very important subject. Wa qulna laka, O Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when we said to you, Inna Rabbaka hat bin nas. Indeed, your Lord, your Rub, has encompassed people. Ahata in, envelops the people. This should not be taken in the sense of, you know, God became or God is the creation, uh, which is Hama'us. There's no Hama'us in Islam. But, in, it, but, but to understand the reality of that is also not possible. There are certain things that are not possible to understand. The certain realities of Allah that are not possible to understand, and certain realities of the things that He showed the Prophet in Mi'raj, which is the next subject coming, that are not possible necessarily or easy to understand. Okay, Allah is Allah says He's here, but how is He here? We don't know, right? To say He's here uh, uh, in in only knowledge and only some of His attributes, this is also problematic. To say He's here physically, meaning His His person, this is also problematic. We know uh, in Allah, يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِ Allah is between man and his heart or even closer to him than his jugular vein on the one side, right? But how, we don't know how. And getting into how, that is, is a very difficult and one uh, thing that we cannot get into. وَمَا جَعَلْنَا رُؤْيَ الَّتِي أَرَيْنَاكَ إِلَّا فِتْنَةً لِلنَّاسِ And we did not show you what we showed you except that it would be a trial for the people. Meaning the 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 the, the story of Mi'raj, uh, the going to Jerusalem, going to the seeing all these things, and especially when they heard about the the tree in the hellfire, shajarat mal'una fil Quran, right? The shajarat mal'una, the cursed tree mentioned in the Quran. When they heard about that, right? How can there be a tree in the fire? How can there be a tree coming from the hellfire and it's there? It goes against aql, right? So there are things of the unseen world that we simply can't understand. وَنُخَوِّفُهُمْ فَمَا يَزِيدُهُمْ إِلَّا تُغْيَانًا كَبِيرًا And we warn them, we're warning them, that instead of looking at the, the message, right, you're going into the unseen world, which you don't know anything about anyway, and you want to make that the basis of your rational decision, you should make your rational decision based upon what is the message? What is he teaching us? What is the what is what does Muhammad tell us about Allah in the things that we can actually observe? Okay, وَنُخَوِّفُهُمْ and we are warning them فَمَا يَزِيدُهُمْ إِلَّا تُغْيَانٍ كَبِيرًا and they don't increase except in rebellion in great rebellion. Okay, uh, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says the subject of Adam and Iblis is another common subject between Surah Al Kahf and Surah Al Isra. These two surahs. Why did the Malaika say to Adam, "For they did not say to Iblis, 'Qala asjudu liman khalaqta tina." When remember, when we said to Mala the angels, "Asjudu li Adam, bow down to Adam." For they did not say to Iblis, they all bow down except Iblis. Qala asjudu, should I bow down liman khalaqta tina, the one who's been made of clay? I should bow down to him. So and then. Uh, he says, "Qala araita hada aladhi karamta alayya." And then he said, "Oh Allah, do you see this one who you have honored more than me? Alayya la in akhartani." Oh Allah, if you give me time, okay? If you give me, if you ila yom al qiyamah till the day of judgment. If you give me time till the day of judgment, la hatiyanka la la ah. 
ذُرِّيَّتَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا I will destroy their descendants. And actually this word, uh, you know how you give a, uh, you put in front of a horse the, 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 the reins so you can control the horse to the right, to the left. This is what it, I'll, I'll take control of them. I will destroy them all. I'll destroy your, your, the, these human beings, the ones that you've chosen over me, except for a few of, of them. Okay? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in response, Then Allah said, okay, go. Okay? For whoever follows you, okay, uh, then the hellfire is ready. Will be the reward for you. Jaza'am mawfura. It's it's a great uh, uh, reward for you if if they follow you. Okay, it'll be great. And then was uh, ziz manistata'ta minhum. This is ziz means you know when an animal stands up and its legs are shaking because it's it's shake standing for the first time. It's it's weak and and the legs are shaking because they're standing for the first time. So the so it was ziz. من استطعت منهم بصوتك وأجلب عليهم بخيلك ورجلك وشاركهم في الأموال والأولاد وعدهم. Now this is very important in terms of occult and secret societies and magicians and wizards and all of that, right? And incite them, right? Shake them. من استطعت منهم whoever you can of them بصوتك with your voice. With their mass media, with your songs, with your music industry, right? Wajlib alayhim, right? And assault them uh, with your horses, and bi khaylika warijlika, and meaning with your army, okay? Bi khaylika warijlika, and your foot soldiers, okay? Washarikum, and you become partners with these human beings, bi fi amwali wal awladi wa idhum. And with your wealth and your children, you know, these, these rich, rich people that are in these secret Freemasonry societies and stuff, shaitan's with them. He's now sharikum fil amwali wal awlad. Wa sharikum fi amwali wal awlad wa iduhum. And they have promises that shaitan has made. Wa ma yaiduhum is shaitan. And shaitan does not promise illa ghurura except it's delusional to believe in those promises. إِنَّ عِبَادِي لَيْسَ لَكَ عَلَيْهِمْ سُلْطَانِ My servants, my true servants, my tr- servants of ikhlas, لَيْسَ, ليس عَلَيْهِمْ لَيْسَ, ليس لَكَ عَلَيْهِمْ سُلْطَانِ You have no authority over them. No authority over them. وَكَفَى بِرَبِّكَ وَكِيلًا And Allah is enough of disposer of affairs. He's enough to protect you, to guide you, to give you guidance and protect you from shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in these difficult times, protect us from the shayateen and their uh, their their tactics and their strategies and their plotting and their planning against us. رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي يُزْجِي لَكُمْ فِي الْفُلْكِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one, your Rabb is the one who drives you, you the ship, meaning in the, in the ship, فِي الْبَحْرِ in the, in, the, in, the, in the sea. Right, لِتَبْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ Seeking his fadl, seeking his bounties. إِنَّهُ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا Indeed, he is most merciful to you. Okay, then what happens? وَإِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الدُّرُّ فِي الْبَحْرِ And when some evil adversity and difficulty touches you in the ocean, ظَلَّ مَنْ تَدْعُونَ إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ Then you forget about all lost or all those. You forget about all those who you worship other than Allah. At that time, your nature, your human nature in its frantic, in the frantic state that you're in, you're only calling upon Allah at that time. فَلَمَّا نَجَّاكُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ And then when we bring you back safely to the land, أَعْرِضْتُمْ Then you just, you know, turn away. Right? You just turn away. وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ كَفُورًا Indeed, man is very, very ungrateful. أَفَأَمِنْتُمْ أَنْ يَخْصِفَ بِكُمْ do you think that if I, I, Allah brought you to the land that the earth can't swallow you, meaning in the land you can't just get swallowed by the earth, right? Uh, or that he would send against you a, a storm uh, that has stones in it, 
ثم لا تجد لكم وكيلا and you would have no one to help you at that time أم أمنتم أم أن يعيدكم فيه تارة أخرى is it then it's also possible you will Allah will bring you back to that ocean again فيرسل عليكم قاصفا من الريح then Allah would bring a hurricane of of wind فيغرقكم بما كفرتم and Allah would drown you because of the kufr that you did ثم لا تجد لكم علينا به تبيع تبيع and then you would find no one to take uh, no avenger no one to take revenge for you at that time وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ Now this is again repeated over the, the kirama the, the, the height of man is where as the khalifa of Allah where it should be and where man brings himself down to وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمَ And indeed we have honored the children of Adam وَحَمَلْنَا وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ And we have carried him in the land and in the sea وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ And we have provided him of tayyibat, pure things to eat. وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا And we have favored him over what we have created, a great preference, a definite preference is given to man. Right? This creation of man is God's greatest creation. Jinns were created earlier, uh, most likely based upon some research. It could have been during the Big Bang itself when there was a big nar, a big fire. And from that fire, from actual elements of the universe, jinns were created. And then man was created when the earth was cooling down and water and clay, water and, water and dust were meeting and becoming clay. At that time, man was created. Okay? Allahu A'lam. But the point is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored man, a huge, humongous favor. But man is lost in this world and in the, in the narrowness of this world. يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلُّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ That day where everyone will be called by their leaders. Over here for leaders, imam is used. You see, because of the, some of the perversions that have happened in, in Islam, one of them being that, you know, we say somebody who leads prayers are imam. But that being a leader, Allah uses this word imam for the person that people used to follow. Everybody follows someone. So, يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلُّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ Everyone will be called with their imams. فَمَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَأُولَئِكَ يَكْرَعُونَ كِتَابَهُمْ وَلَا يُذْرَمُونَ فَقِيلًا And then those people who are given the book on their right hand, right, they will read their record. Oh, subhanAllah, right? And وَلَا يَكْرَعُونَ كِتَابَهُمْ وَلَا يُذْرَمُونَ فَقِيلًا They are, you know, the date seed, it has a small layer of, like this small layer of, uh, Uh, you could say thread on it, okay? And uh, you can sometimes take it off of the of the date seed. You might want to try that one day. Um, but anyway, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you won't be even do, done wrong to even accord, even to the to that little extent. No, nothing wrong will, there's no thul, no injustice will be done uh, to anyone. Now referring to the pagans of Mecca, right? And the pressure that they were trying to put upon the people That look, you know, we're trying to compromise with Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but you know, he he doesn't listen to us. We ask him for a sign, he doesn't give it to us. We ask to compromise with him in any way, shape, or form. He's not willing to compromise. So in yakadu liyaftun liyaftunaka, O Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they it's as if they are tempting you. Anil ladi awhayna ilayk regarding that which we have sent down to you, right? Because they say, as we also already mentioned in Surah Yunus, uh, Come with another Qur'an. Why this? Why this? Why are these the teachings, right? So, That you will come up or that you will, uh, they will try to tempt you that in order to make you invent something about us, Allah says. إِذَنْ لَا تَتَّخِذُونَكَ خَلِيلًا And then... Uh, they should take you as a friend if you compromise with them, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning this scenario that the Prophet was going through in Mecca. And they were saying, bring a miracle, bring a miracle. So Allah says, وَلَوْ لَا أَن ثَبَّتْ And if you want to understand the subject, then go to the Nahal and the previous surahs where the subject that they were asking, people in Mecca were saying, look, give us a sign. Just give us a sign. وَلَوْ لَا أَن ثَبَّتْ Naka, if it, we, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, had not given you the strength 
لَكَدْ كِتَّ تَرْكَنُوا إِلَيْهِمْ شَيْئًا قَلِيلَ Indeed, you would have bent towards them. Even though it's being said to the Prophet ﷺ, but the message is actually for the companions of the Prophet that there will be no compromise. There is no compromise in, in, the regard, in regards to Qur'an, right? In regards to the message of Qur'an, okay? إِذَنْ لَأَذَقْنَاكَ And if this had, if, if, the, if, if you had done that, وسلم, which wouldn't have been uh, possible because he was made the messenger of Allah and the messenger of Allah never disobey Allah. After seeing the heavens and seeing Mi'raj, and it's unthinkable. But here the point is being made. There was so much pressure on the Prophet from all sides. Look, give them a sign. Even the companions could have gone to the Prophet and I don't see, know of any record. But it would be like, you know, the pro companions are like, they're asking for a miracle. Just give them a miracle. Right? إِذَنْ لَأَذَقْنَاكَ ذِعْفَ الْحَيَاةِ وَذِعْفَ الْمَمَاثِ You would have been double punished in this world and in the next world. ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُ لَكَ عَلَيْنَا نَصِيرًا And you would have found no supporter against us. Right? And the other group that is being uh, uh, being addressed here are the Quraysh of Makkah who are putting this pressure on pro our beloved Prophet Wasallam that look, he's not going to change his stance. Right? وَإِنْ كَادُوا يَسْتَفِيزُونَكَ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ لِيُخْرِجُكَ مِنْهَا And, O oh, Prophet ﷺ, they want to drive you out of the earth and evict you from here. يُخْرِجُكَ And this is, meaning this is, uh, this is what they wanted. إِذَنْ وَإِذَنْ And if that is the case, meaning Allah is not denying that this would happen, لَا يَلْبِثُونَ خِلَافَكَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا After you leave, after you've been evicted from the, this place, you, they would not be remaining there except for a little while. Okay, so this was a prophecy given in the Quran regarding the Fathul Makkah, that the Prophet would come back, he would be, uh, yes, he would leave. And the Prophet had already known this because Warqa bin Nawafil had mentioned this to the Prophet Wasallam, and the Prophet was like, they're going to kick me out. Sunnata man qad arsalna qablaka min rusulina. This is the sunnah, this is the established way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And that is, Me and my messengers have to prevail. The Rasul of Allah, the one who comes with the book, he has to prevail. This is why Isa alayhi salatu wasalam has to prevail. He has to come back. Sunnata man qad arsalna qablaka min, min rusulina. Wala tajidu li sunnatullahi tahwila. Our sunnah doesn't change. La aghlibanna ana wa rusuli. Me and my messengers have to prevail. Okay, that's the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other meaning of this ayah is sunnata man qad arsalna qablak min rusulina. That when a messenger leaves the city to whom he was sent, and after that, when he does hijrah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greater punishments start coming, which came in the battle, in the, which in the form of the battle of Badr and so on and so forth, until Fathul Makkah happened. That's the other meaning. Okay? So, uh, over here, I just wanted to mention in the previous verse, the, that same word is, liyastafizunaka. Uh, li, li this is the same word that shaitan used, that I will make them shake, right? Is from their place. So in Kadu, they want as if they want to make you shake and make you take you out of the earth. Okay, so this is the meaning of this uh, verse of the Quran. Now, because there was so much pressure, and the Muslims were being persecuted, so now some things are being said, preparing the Prophet. Because this is this surah comes down to the Prophet وسلم, towards the end of the Makki period, where the Prophet is about to do his hijrah now. And so now some basic uh, points are being made about this situation that is about to occur in which the Prophet ﷺ is about to make this hijrah and why he's going to make this hijrah. Number one, Okay, and the Prophet ﷺ said, Establish the prayer, right, at the decline of the sun. Okay, And, uh, until the darkness of the night. Okay, so this is that. Wal Quran al Fajr, and in the Quran, the Fajr, the Quran of Fajr prayer. The Quran should be recited longer in the Fajr time. In al Quran al Fajr kana mashhuda. Indeed, the Quran at Fajr time is witnessed, or meaning witnessed by the angels, or there is presence of mind. You are yourself witnessing what you are reading, and in the Quran, in the Quran, in the Fajr time, the Quran should be read longer. And it should be like a, a pouring of rain of Qur'an upon you during the Fajr time. Okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَحَجَّدْ بِهِ And from the la- as for the night time, فَتَحَجَّدْ بِهِ Do tahajjud. نَافِلَةً لَكْ As an extra bonus for yourself. نَافِلْ Extra, additional. أَسَى أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامَ مَحْمُودًا And perhaps your Lord will give you the maqam of Mahmud. The most praiseworthy station and rank to be in. Allah will give that to you, O Prophet ﷺ. And then now preparing the Prophet ﷺ for that maqam al-mahmud, meaning in dunya and in akhirah. Okay? Now the dua is giving, given to the Prophet ﷺ, the dua to say when he's going for that hijrah. وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَدْخِلْنِي مُدْخَلَ صِدْقِ وَأَخْرِجْنِي مُخْرَجَ صِدْقِ وَجْعَلْنِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ سُلْطَانِ النَّصِيرَةِ And say, say قُلْ رَبِّ أَدْخِلْنِي مُدْخَلَ صِدْقِ O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enter me into this city, meaning Medina, right? In, in in with truthfulness, in soundness, in in purity. Rabbi adhilni mudhala sidkin wa akhrijni mukhrala sidkin. And when I leave Medina, when meaning for Fatul Makkah, when he comes back to Makkah as the victor, okay, and, and let me leave in truthfulness. Let me enter in truthfulness, let me leave in truthfulness. Wajal and make for me Milladunka from yourself, your special self. A special decision made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can only be given by a special decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sultan al Nasira, a great Sultan al Nasira, a great authority and power. This is why when the Prophet entered Medina, it was as if he was entering like a king. The people singing Ta'ala Badru Alayna, waiting for the Prophet, his entrance was as if a man of a, a, a man of a, a, great, a crownless king is coming to Medina. And then he entered back into Mecca as a crownless king, where then he took control of all of Arabia. And all of this for what? وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقِّ Say, the truth has come. وَزَحَقَ الْبَاطِلِ And the falsehood has been perished, has vanished. إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوقًا Because batil, the falsehood, is something that it, it vanishes when the truth comes. Right? And so in this, in the, in the war against the shayateen, it is so important to have the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to outdo the falsehood brought out by the shayateen. Even though the victory is coming to the Prophet eight years after being in Medina, but the, the decision was already made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَجَاءَ الْحَقِّ وَزَحَاقِ الْبَاطِلِ The Prophet will come in truth and the falsehood will vanish. Right? And then you'll find again, I think there's no other surah in the Quran that mentions the word Quran more than Sutil Bani Israel. And we sent down this Quran that is Shifa, that is a healing and a mercy for the believers. And the wrongdoers don't increase except in loss, except in khasara. So, وَإِذَا, وإذا أَنْعَمْنَا عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ أَعْرَبَ آنَا آنَا وَنَعَا بِجَانِبِهِ And when we give favors to mankind, أَعْرَضَ He turns away. وَأَنَا بِجَانِبِهِ And he, you know, he becomes arrogant. He stands up to the side. وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ كَانَ يَعُوسَ And then when evil falls on him, he becomes يَعُوسَ He becomes uh, hopeless. Okay? Meaning, this is the behavior of man. You know, this is the behavior of man. And so, Qur'an is shifa. Qur'an is the curing of this type of behavior. Right? And we all have this type of behavior. When difficulty comes upon us, we remember Allah. And when we're in normal situation, we're almost as if we're arrogant towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, may Allah protect us all. But this is how we are as human beings. So, Qur'an is that shifa ulima fi sudur. Right? That cures you from this arrogance that cures you from all the all the problems of the heart and is even a shifa even for the physical body as well but more so and specifically so for the internal heart and the diseases in the heart everything from hasad jealousy and so on and so forth Look, everyone is tested according to their situation so could everyone works according to their shakil their shakal their pattern it could be your behavior patterns, it could be your genes, it could be all these patterns that we have. كُلُّ يَعْمَلُوا عَلَىٰ شَاكِلَةِ فَرَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ هُوَ أَحْدَىٰ صَبِيلًا And indeed your Rabb knows most who is the most guided 
in the right way. So as you know, the Prophet Sallallahu even mentioned uh, people are like, you know, metals, like somebody's gold, someone's silver. We have different characteristics. Anyway, then the next ayah is, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الرُّوحِ O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they ask you about the ruh. Now remember I told you the relationship between Sutul Kaf and Bani Israel. The three questions the Jewish scholars asked, one was the ruh, one was of who's Zulqarnayn, and the other one was who are the Ashab al-Kahf. So one of the answers is given in this surah, and two of the answers are given in the other surah, again making a connection between Subhanallah and Alhamdulillah of the two surahs. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الرُّوحِ O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they ask you regarding the ruh, the soul. وَلِلْرُوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي Say the ruh is from the Amr of my Rabb. وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And you have been not given knowledge except a little. But this question of the ruh was a little tricky one because the word ruh has many meanings. The word ruh is used in Quran for Quran. The word ruh is used for Allah himself. نَخْتُفِهِ مِنْ رُوحِ The word ruh is used for ruh al-Amin, ruh al-Qudus, for Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. The word ruh is used for our soul. So, you know, in, so the easy answer was, وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا You've been not given knowledge except a little bit. And also, الرُوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي Ruh is what it is, is a command of Allah. Whether it is the Qur'an, it is a command of Allah. Whether it is the human soul, it is a command of Allah. Whether it is something Jibreel is doing, is a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's the Amr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reality of these things, obviously, these are unseen things un, can, that can not be reached by human thought or human uh, observation. So, now the one way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again, referring to the Qur'an, this topic comes up over and over again in Surah Al-Bani Israel and is pointed to in Surah Al-Kahf. وَلَئِنْ شِعْنَا لَنَذْحَبَنَّ بِالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ O Prophet ﷺ, if we want, لَنَذْحَبَنَّ بِالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ We would take away that which has been revealed to you. The Prophet didn't have to memorize Qur'an, it was just given to him. So Allah, Allah says, in a way to help the these beautiful teachings of Qur'an, don't kill the child girl, be fair in justice in, 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 in how you deal with uh, people in business. And all the rules the Qur'an has laid down that we just read of the Ten Commandments also. You know, if Allah wants, Allah could take this away from the heart of the Prophet. And so it's being said to the companions, the Prophet, that they should have some appreciation. You know, yes, difficulties are there, but the, look at the teachings that are being given. ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُ لَكَ بِهِ عَلَيْنَا وَكِيلًا And then the Prophet وسلم, you would not find against Allah any uh, advocate uh, against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala illa rahmatan min rabbik except it is the mercy of Allah inna fadlahu kana alayka kabira and Allah is saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that his fadl, his favor over you O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is really humongous it's a great favor what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has did uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the other thing that they were, the, the Quraysh was saying is that, okay, bring us a whole Qur'an. Don't come with these verses, 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 verses. No, bring a whole book. Let us touch it. Let us see it come from the sky, so on and so forth. Over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throws a challenge himself. قُلْ إِنْ اجْتَمَعْتَ الْإِنسَ وَالْجِنِّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُوا مِثْلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ مِثْ بِمِثْلِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْدُهُمْ لِبَعْدٍ ظَهِيرًا Say, if you gather all the humans, and even the jinns from your occult world, from your uh, world of, uh, of, of the wizards and the magicians, if they all come together, القرآن, that they come with something like this Qur'an, they can't come with something equal to this. Well, even not only equal to this, but not even something like this. بِمِثْلِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِيرًا Even if one of, they were to help one another, assist one another, they couldn't be able to do this. وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا لِلنَّاسِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ And we have given examples. We have diversified different, uh, uh, you know, teachings and different examples. وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا Every type of example, every type of instruction. لِلنَّاسِ فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ Of all types of examples. فَأَبَا But they refused. أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ إِلَّا كَفُورًا most people refuse. You know, they didn't increase except in 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 disbelief in kufr. Okay, so uh, and over here are some more demands. And 
and we will not believe in you, O Prophet Sallallahu until you bring a spring for us from coming from the earth. You know, always they want this thing that will like benefit them. Uh, or that you come like with a garden with a, a date a tree and the grape tree what to and the in the there's a river in you know that goes through it uh doing a self irrigation uh system you know the the Quraysh were hearing that there'll be a day of judgment and you know everything will uh, you know the the sky will open and and the whole earth will shake and they were hearing this so now they're saying okay give us a go why don't you do this give us a sign or you make the you know the heavens fall upon us in you know in in small portions in small fragments right uh as you have claimed uh, or bring for us Allah and the angels before us to see. Or they were demanding, then fine, give us a house made of gold. You know, make it automatically appear. Or you go up into the sky. And we will not believe you even if you go up on a stairway or something, you know, you, you, even if you go up, we won't still believe you. And you go into that sky and bring for us a book to read. Until we don't do, see that, we will not believe in you. He says, Allah is the one who is transcendent and all powerful. Hal kuntu? Am I illa basharan rasula? Am I anything except a human messenger of Allah? And Allah then says, "Ma mana nas ayu minu idja ahumul huda." Not nothing prevented people from believing when guidance came to them. Illa an qalu, except you heard them say, "What? Abaatha Allahu basharan rasula." Will Allah send a man as a messenger? So the problem is twofold, right? One is the reality of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As yes, he's human, right? And all they can see is that he's human, right? And so for them, the conversation was at that level. They can only see a human being. So that's the Allah subhanahu wa taala is saying, "Abaath Allahu bashar rasula." So and the other problem is. That there are Muslims who accept the Prophet as the Prophet, but they're not willing to accept him as a man. So you have to accept the greatness, the greatness, the greatness, the the fadila that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just mentioned. Inna alayka fadlan kabira. O Prophet, there's a great fadl upon you that you've been given this guidance. Right? The nur has been given to you. Right? So that is uh, the greatest thing that be, could be given to any human being that's the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which both of these points relate to this surah but all they see is and all they say Allahu Rasula, Allah has just raised you know you go to the store like us you marry like us you have children like us you eat like us that's all they could see so now the answer Allah gives قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَلَائِكَةُ يَمْشُونَ مُطْمَئِنَّ if there was on earth angels walking with itminan, okay? If they were walking with complete tranquility, meaning they're walking like human beings are walking, right? Uh, we would have sent down from the sky a angel for them to see, right? So if it's humans, we're going to send a human to give the guidance. If it is an angel, they would have sent, Allah would have sent an angel. They don't see the ikhlaq of the Prophet, the character of the Prophet, the honesty of the, the message of the Prophet, the dalil, the, the, the arguments the Prophet is, the Quran is giving, right? They don't see that. They see just, oh, he's a man, why should we listen to him? Okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, قُلْ O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say to them, كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ Allah is enough of a witness between me and you. Meaning, there's enough arguments about this, that's it. Indeed, he is regarding his servants khabiran basira. He is well aware of their situation and sees everything. Whoever is guided 
Whoever Allah has guided is guided. And whoever has gone astray, there's no helper, no protector other than Allah Himself. And we will raise them on the day of judgment, deaf, dumb, and blind. And their, their resting place will be the hellfire. Every time the fire gets a little bit, you know, less, Allah will increase it on them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is the reward of them because of their denying our signs. When we are bones and when we are shattered into little, little pieces, right? We're fragments of the earth. Will we be raised back again, anew again? If you notice, this is the second time this topic is coming up. So, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ قَادِرٍ أَلَىٰ أَنْ يُخْلَقَ مِثْلَهُمْ Do you not see the one who created, the Allah who created the heavens and the earth? قَادِرٌ أَلَىٰ أَنْ يُخْلَقَ مِثْلَهُمْ وَجَعَلَ لَهُمْ أَجَلًا لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ فَأَبَا ظَالِمُونَ إِلَّا كَفُورًا They don't see that, they, they, you know, they ask these questions, they don't see the sky, they don't see the heavens, right? Uh, that, that if Allah created you the first time, He can create you again. And Allah has made for you an appointed time. Okay? There's no doubt about it. And the wrongdoers, they don't increase except in denial. Okay? قُلْ لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ Now, here's a very interesting about the character of Allah. The character of Allah. Allah compares it with human beings, in a sense, right? قُلْ لَوْ أَنْتُمْ تَمْلِكُونَ خَزَائِنَ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّي O Prophet say to them, that if you human beings, okay, you deniers, if you, you know, if you were the one that were put in charge of the rahma of Allah, the mercy of Allah, إِذَنْ لَأَمْسَمْتُمْ خَشْيَةَ الْإِنْفَاقِ uh, You would have, out of fear of spending, Right? What would you, you would have withheld it. Right? If Allah gave you His rahmah to give to the human beings, you would have kept it for yourself. In, in, وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ فَطُورًا كَانَ الْإِنسَانُ قَطُورًا Indeed, man is very, very stingy. Now, as Sudil Bani Israel started with the story of the history of Bani Israel, in this last raku now, you will, <coughs> you will see that it's going to end in a, uh, in, in a similar manner. So now, over here, the history that's being mentioned is of the history of the Musa والسلام, in Egypt. And we gave Musa والسلام, right? We gave him nine signs. Two are the Asa, the stick, and then Bayda, the hand that had the, uh, the, the nur on it, the light on it. And then, as punishments of Allah were coming to Bani, uh, to, to the people of Fir'aun, they would, uh, one punish, they would, uh, he would do dua, like for example, blood came down, frogs being everywhere, plagues everywhere. So these things, okay? Uh, they're actually mentioned, I think it's Tulah Hizab. فَاسْأَلْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ إِذْ جَاهُمْ فَقَالَ لَهُ فِرْعَوْنْ إِنِّي لَأَذُنُّكَ يَا مُوسَى مَسْحُورًا So now it is being made the point that, what did they say to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam? Just like they're saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. They said to Musa, you are just a magician. And now they're saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, you are a magician. Okay? So, and you know, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam had a very jalali, a very uh, awe a very awe and a very strong personality. So his answer was, uh, likewise, قَالَ لَقَدْ أَلِمْتَ Oh no, Fir'aun, you already know. مَا أَنزَلَ هَؤُلَاءِ إِلَّا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ All these things, these signs that have come to you is not from anyone except for the Rabb of the heavens and the earth, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, بَصَائِرًا So for you can see, so you can have insight. إِنِّي لَأَذُنُّكَ يَا فِرْعَوْنَ مَثْبُورًا Oh Fir'aun, I see that you're the one that's destroyed. وَأَرَادَ أَنْ يَسْتَفِزَّهُمْ This is the same word used for the Prophet for the Hijrah, right? وَأَرَادَ أَنْ يَسْتَفِزَّهُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ so even the companions are being told here and the Prophet is being told, look, they wanted to, uh, you know, uh, throw Musa out. But look at what happened. Fir'aun drowned. So they intended. 
يَسْتَفِيزَهُمْ To drive them out from the earth. Right? فَأَغْرَقْنَاهُ So Allah drowned him. وَمَنْ مَعَهُ And whoever was with him, Jamia, all of them. Okay? Now this verse could have two meanings. وَقُلْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ أُسْكُنُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ And after that, when they left Egypt, it was said, look, you now live on the earth. Okay? فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ And when the promise of the Akhirah comes. Now in this same surah, وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ means that second promise. Right? Uh, when they had their first rise and then decline and the second uh, rise and the second decline was the second promise. But وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ can also mean if you take the other meaning of that verse, which I mentioned Shaykh Sha'rawi took it in that sense, that they did fasad the first time and then now is the second, so this is akhirah. Then جِعْنَاكُمْ Lafifa, We will gather you all back onto one place. Where after, because after uh, the 70 AD, after the temple was destroyed, they had their diaspora, they were all over the world. Now they're being sent back to Israel. Israel is the first step of the, you could say, the, the actual punishment that is due unto them because they tried to deny and kill Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And the rule is, anna wa rusuli, my, me and my messenger have to prevail. And because that is the rule of Allah, so Isa alayhi salatu wasalam has to come back and has to uh, uh, do a judgment upon those whom he was sent to, meaning Bani Israel. وَقُلْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِ لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ أُسْكُنُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ And it was said to Bani Israel, live in the earth. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ And when the second promise happens, جَعْنَاكُمْ بِالْلَفِيفَةِ We will bring you all together into one place or we'll bring you all together in the day of judgment. Both meanings are correct, but perhaps the stronger meaning is looking at the beginning and the ending of this surah, that it's referring to a part of the history. This was the beginning of their history, talking about Musa and Fir'aun, and now this is referring to the ending of that history. Okay? وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ And in truth we have sent it down. وَبِالْحَقِّ نَزَلْ And in truth we sent it down. I mean, this is an emphasis. And a, with truth we have sent down the Qur'an in truth. وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ وَبِالْحَقِّ نَزَلْ this Qur'an comes down as a decisive, deciding factor of who will, which nations will rise up, which nations will rise down. As the Prophet himself said, Allah will raise nations because of this Qur'an and throw down nations because of this Qur'an. And we have not sent you Muhammad وسلم, except as the one who gives good tidings and except as one who warns. When it comes to giving guidance, the Prophet is shown as you have no authority and in order to make that clear that they have to make that decision, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? وَقُرْآنًا فَرَطْنَاهُ لِتَقْرَأَ عَلَى النَّاسِ And the Qur'an we have, we have separated by, you know, separated by little comes down and then little by little. Like not one whole book, right? لِتَقْرَأَ عَلَى النَّاسِ عَلَى مُكْثِمْ وَأَنزَلْنَاهُ تَنْزِيلًا so that you might recite it to the people over a prolonged period, meaning a proper education, right? And we sent it down little by little, according to the time and the need and the situation, we sent down the instruction. Otherwise, it would have been hard to understand what, for what situation is one verse, right? قُلْ آمِنُوا أَوْ لَا تُؤْمِنُوا Say whether you believe or don't believe. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْإِلْمِ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ إِذَا تُطْلَعَ عَلَيْهِمْ يُخَرُّ إِلَىٰ أَذْقَانِ سُجَّدًا Those people that have knowledge, knowledge of sacred texts, إِذَا تُطْلَعَ عَلَيْهِمْ When this Qur'an is recited to them, Muhammad is saying this is the word of Allah and they read it, right? يُخَرُّ أَذْقَانِ سُجَّدًا They fall down in prostration and it, 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 after they hear the, the, the message uh, of, of the one that they were expecting as a... You know, in Deuteronomy, that there would be a messenger raised from amongst your cousins and so on and so forth. And they say, Subhanallah, the, the promise of our Rabb has been fulfilled, has been completed. And they fall down on their faces. And they cry. And they increase in their khushu'ah. This is a place where you have to do sujood, so I'm going to do sujood very quickly. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَخِرُّونَ إِلَىٰ أَزْقَانِ 
وَيَبْكُونَ وَيَزِيدَهُمْ خُشُعَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Now these are the two quls. Number one, in Mecca, they used to hear the Muslims saying Allah and Rahman. And in some narrations, when we would do dua, the companions of the Prophet say Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, you know, like this, or Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So they'd be like, who's Allah, who's Rahman? So this thing was there. Allah says, قُلْ 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 اللَّهَ أَوْ إِذُ Rahman." Whether you call Allah or Ar-Rahman. أَيَّ مَا تَدْعُوهُ Whichever of these you call, فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى For him is the most beautiful names. وَلَا تَجْحَرْ بِصَلَاتِكَ وَلَا تُخَافِتْ بِهَا وَابْتَغِ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ سُبِيلًا Don't do your du'as out loud because, you know, salah here means du'a, okay? Uh, or it can also mean uh, salah as in recitation of the uh, prayers. But it can... Uh, it, probably means dua here as the technical meaning of dua and linguistically comes in the meaning of dua also in hadith literature. So, وَلَا تُخَافِتْ بِهَا وَابْتَغِي بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ سَبِيلًا But when you recite your Qur'an or you're doing your duas, seek a middle way between the two. Then the, it ends with a very important verse of the Qur'an that has to do with uh, Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي Say all praises for Allah, all gratitude is for Allah, all, all appreciation is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدْ The one who has taken, not taken any son for himself. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ This dominion of Allah, this kingdom of Allah, he has no partners in it. Okay? Shaytan is allowed to do what he's allowed to do. The ummah is allowed to do what they, and their rules that are in place through this Qur'an, spiritual rules that determine who has dominion, who has power, but ultimately all power is Allah's and it is under Allah's power that this interplay between His creation is allowed. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ وَلِيُّ مِنَ الظُّلْ And He does not have any friend because of any weakness, right? Allah has friends, but not due to weaknesses, right? right? Human beings have, sometimes they make friendships because of weaknesses, they need somebody's friendship to get something done. What, what, وَكَبِّرُهُ تَكْبِيرًا Make Allah great. Make Allah great. This is this is what the, you know, رَبِّ أَدْخِلْنِي مُدْخَلَ صِدْكِهُ وَأَخْرِجْنِي مُخْرَجَ صِدْكِهُ Allah, enter me in, in, in sincerity and take me out in sincerity. وَجَاءَ الْحَقِّ And the truth has come and the falsehood has vanished. All the result should be Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. The word لِكَلِمَةِ اللَّهِ هِيَ أُلِيَا So that you know that the word of Allah is most supreme. Okay? So this is very, very important. What, not just saying it in the masjid, but actually in the parliament, in the congress, in the state level, at the national level, that the laws of Allah should be implemented, right? The words of Allah in Qur'an, the rules of Allah in Qur'an should be implemented in actual form. So this is how this surah ends. And if you don't do it, then you will have your decline. The rise happened when you held on to the teachings. And the decline happened when you let go the teachings. Both for Bani Israel and the Sunnah of Allah doesn't change. The same rule is for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, inshallah, we end the surah, and we will continue with Tilkahat, inshallah.